just one of your hosts for today's video. Um, I'm actually have uh, Wendy actually with us today. Say hello. Hey, everybody. Uh, so she's actually going to be doing a majority of this video for us today. Wendy is one of uh, actually our main manager that runs uh, everybody that's on the phone uh, and kind of helps with questions and manages client accounts. And so the main reason she's going to go over it is this is what she does on a daily basis. She's also one of our top producers um, on the phone. And so she's really going to dive deep into what we do every day um, and, and really how to create leads and how to do it effectively. So we're going to go over not only how to create a lead, we're going to go over really just the background uh, of why we're going to choose different agents. So we're going to go over how to choose an agent, how to do a zip code check, uh, which are all terms you're going to hear a lot uh, during conversation and training. Uh, we're going to go over really just how to fill out the main form. So, so I know it sounds pretty easy, just okay, just ask them their first and last name, what kind of car they drive. But there's a way to do it that makes it not only efficient, but also to where the client or the, the lead, sorry, is uh, doesn't feel like they're giving out you know too much personal information, right? So we're going to go over how to really just phrase that effectively uh, to go ahead and grab that information uh, from them quickly. And then at the very end, we're going to go over how to transfer the call actually to one of the insurance agents. So you took a call from a person, they would like an insurance quote, you went ahead and gathered all of the information and matched them with one of our buyers. Now we're going to take that person and get them over to one of those agents to actually get that insurance quote and see how much money they can save every month. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Wendy. Uh, she's going to really take it from here. I'll chime in probably at the end or, uh, or in between, but uh, she's going to take over the rest of the call. So take it away, Wendy. Okay, everybody. The first place we're going to go is we're going to be on Whitetail. So you have your phone system. This is your phone system. You're going to uh, click on agent. This right here is you. This is your seat number, your phone number per se. So you're going to put that in, uh, put in your password, and you're going to click on get campaign. Okay. Now, select a campaign. You're going to always select auto insurance unless you're told otherwise. So you click on 1001 auto insurance. Click sign in. And now our phone is getting ready to be set up. There we go. So you're going to see a couple of different things here. This right here, outbound call, inbound call, it's going to kind of tell you where the area is. I really just kind of shrink that down. Um, so you don't need the script. You just kind of need to know where that call is coming from. Oklahoma, Texas, wherever. Okay, and you're going to see right here an agent chat box. Right here under me, you will see everybody that's on the phone right then while you're while you're on the phone. Uh, different things that might go in the chat is checking a zip code. Um, if, for example, an agent needs more leads than another agent, if we have more than one in the area, that may go in the chat. Different things go in the chat, and you'll kind of pick that up as we go. Okay, so we, we are automatically paused when we first log in, so you'll see that the pause button is orange, and this is orange at the top, so we know we're paused and we're good. Now you're going to go over to the Local Leads website where you're going to put in your uh, user information and your password and click log in. Okay, now the first thing you want to do in order to start working is you're going to click on click staff and clock in. Put in the last four of your social security number. You've been clocked in. Okay, now if you forget to clock in, it's going to tell you when you try to send a lead sheet, you've not clocked in and it's not going to let you do it. So you don't want to forget that step. All right, and the next thing we're going to do here is hover over leads. Go to auto insurance leads and create a lead. Okay, now we have our lead sheet up, we have our phone up, and we're ready to go there. This is our script. We basically go down the script, um, sort of question by question by question. We're going to uh, determine right at the beginning of a conversation whether or not a particular lead can go to one of our agents or if it's going to go to an external buyer. So that's why the questions are in these orders and it does kind of flow right down the lead sheet. So we'll go over a little bit more of that in a minute. So we're going, we're ready to go now. We have our script printed out in front of you. You have your lead sheet up. 
and that's what that's called as a lead sheet. You'll hear it referred to a thousand times a day. You're going to go over to your phone and you're going to click on active so that you're ready to get a call. And now it's blue up at the top. Your active button is green and we're just going to wait for a call to come in. Okay, you'll see down at the bottom that was blue. That means it's an incoming call. If somebody says hello and it's white at the bottom, that would be an outgoing call and you're going to introduce yourself and tell them what your business is about. Okay, if it's a blue call, it's coming back in. They're calling in and you're going to go over to your script. You're going to say, hey, this is Wendy. How can I help you today? And they're going to say something like, oh, well, well, you guys called me and I didn't know why. So you're going to explain to them, well, we're calling on behalf of Nationwide, Allstate, Progressive, and we're offering a free quote today since the rates have gone down on car insurance. Okay. You don't want to pause too long before you ask them the first question. What company do you have right now for your insurance company? So we want to know. Uh, one, what company they have so we can determine if we have a place to send them. So say, for example, they have Progressive. All right. Well, how long have you had Progressive Insurance? So here you go. Now, over on Client Specifics, all companies require six months of continuous coverage, except for Allstate, they need one year of continuous coverage. So if the person has only had insurance for, say, four months, that is going to be an external buyer, okay? If they've had insurance for more than six months or more than a year, then you're going to put it here in the box. So we'll say this, this person has had coverage for more than a year. Now, on this dropdown, usually it's going to be over a year. If they say they've been with Progressive for six months, for example, and they did not have any coverage, prior to that, then you would click on this one over six months and less than a year, okay? So anything over six months can go to any of our agents, except for Allstate, they need one year of continuous coverage. So the next thing you're going to ask them is, have you had any tickets or at-fault accidents in the last three years? Now, here you go. If they have had a major at-fault accident, they've had three speeding tickets, they've had a DUI, that kind of thing, they're not going to qualify to be sent to one of our agents. So in that case, it's going to be an external buyer. The external buyer will be gone over in another video. Okay, you're going to click external buyer. There's a little bit of a different transfer that's on the transfer video. We'll go over that a little bit more later. So for this, we're going to ask the next thing. They, they have progressive insurance. They've had it more than a year. Uh, just default these two questions to standard because it, it doesn't particularly matter to the agent. They just basically need to know if they've had insurance for over six months or over a year for all state. Okay. You might ask them, well, how much are you paying with progressive? Okay. So they're paying $250 a month. All right. We can put that in. Now you need to know if they're going to be sent to one of our agents. So we want to do a zip check. Okay, for example, if they say their zip code is 83686, oh, we don't have any agents for that zip code. Well, that's because we don't have agents in Nampa, Idaho. Well, all right. So you would click external buyer in that case. So that would go to an external buyer. If they said their, their zip code is, say, 73145, and there we go. We have two agents in that area to choose from. Now, a couple of things here. Obviously, if the lead already has State Farm Insurance, you would not send it to Greg Ellis. Okay? You would choose the other agent. Okay? You would send it to Guy Madison. Now, if they have Progressive, you can choose either one. Okay? Um, there's where we're going to go over to see what they have, all right? This right here is current leads per day. So Greg Ellis has one lead today, and he would like to have six, so we need to send him five more. Uh, he would has current leads per week, 15. His max leads per week are 20. So he needs five more for the day and then five more for the week, okay? Now, a couple of different things come up. Um, typically, you would choose Guy Madison in this case because he has zero leads today. Um, 
he's at six max leads per week and he has 20 out of 24 of his leads for the week fulfilled. So normally you would probably choose Guy Madison for all state. But since this is Oklahoma, and these are just a couple of little particulars, a lot of people already have State Farm. If the current lead does not have State Farm, we typically will choose Greg Ellis first. So that's what we're going to do in this case. Now, occasionally I'm going to put over here in the chat, the next two leads go to Greg Ellis. Then you would send the next two leads to Greg Ellis unless they had State Farm. Or I may say, well, the next two leads need to go to Guy Madison. Um, because Greg Ellis needs a, a slight break, okay? So then I would put that in the chat. The next couple of leads need to go to, to Guy Madison. So those are a little bit kind of a couple of the determining factors. So we know they don't have any tickets or accidents. They have coverage for over six months, which is good for State Farm, and we're ready to go. So we know we can send that to one of our agents. All right, so going back to the script here, we have a zip code. We have um, how long they've had insurance, no tickets or accidents. So we're going to basically go to what is the year, make, and model of your vehicle, okay? So if they say they've got a 2016 Nissan Titan, okay, that's a nice truck. Nine times out of 10, it's a brand new one, so it's probably financed. I'm just gonna default to financed. So I'm going to ask them the next question, uh, what is your deductible, okay? now. Your comp deductible takes care of things like your broken windshields and those kind of things. Your collision deductible takes care of things like um, when you're in an, an accident, your insurance is going to cover this and then you pay the first $250 or $500 of that, okay? So you're going to ask them, what is your deductible? Is it $250 or $500? And it says that right here on the lead sheet. That would be your next, your next question. Okay, so these, we're just gonna default. Everybody drives for pleasure. The agents don't even get this information. So we're just going to default all of these to uh, pleasure, the vehicle has an alarm, they drive five days a week, about 10,000 miles a year, they park it in their driveway. All right, so the next question you're going to ask them is, so do you have any other vehicles? All right, so you have a 1970 Volkswagen Beetle. All right, cool. Now, are you putting full coverage on that or is it just liability? I know they own it because nobody finances a 1970 Volkswagen Beetle um, or hardly anybody. So we just need to know, do they have full coverage on that or is it gonna be just liability? Typically with an older vehicle, it's just liability. If it is full coverage, Occasionally, people do do that. You're just going to default and put in 100, 500 because you know the deductible is going to be the same as the first vehicle. So in this case, it's probably just liability. Right here, I'm going to just default. I don't have to ask these questions. We park in the driveway and I put in the same zip code. Any other vehicles? Click on more vehicles and you can put up to four. Now, here's the other thing. Occasionally, you run across somebody with five or six vehicles. You would put those additional vehicles in the notes, okay? Or if they have a motorcycle, uh, say for an example, 2000 Harley Davidson, okay? You would put those in the notes because the motorcycles do not go up here in auto information. They only go down in the notes. So we have four vehicles, a motorcycle, any additional, that kind of thing goes in the notes. Also, if they say anything additional, a lot of people will offer, I have a million dollar umbrella policy. Okay, so we wanna put that in the notes so the agent has a heads up on that. Um, most people aren't gonna give you those kind of details or they don't have it, but occasionally somebody's going to throw that out there and say, well, I have a million dollar umbrella policy. I wanna make sure that's included. So you'd put that in the notes to make sure the agent knows that to put that in the quote. So the next thing you're gonna ask them is, okay, now how do you spell your last name? We ask this this way on purpose because if you ask people, hey, what's your name? they get nervous. So we found over the years that asking in a particular way gives us more success and makes people less nervous about giving out their information. 
So you're just going to ask them, hey, how do you spell your last name? Smith, okay, is that S-M-I-T-H? Make sure that you spell it correctly. S is in Sam, M is in Mary, I-T-H, something like that if it's particularly difficult. If it's Smith, you don't need to do that, obviously. And what's your first name? Okay, Teddy? Awesome. Is that T-E-D-D-Y? All right, great. And Teddy, what's your birthday? Now, you see that kind of flows right in. I'm going to use his name as much as I can because it makes the person more comfortable. Teddy, what's your birthday? We don't ask date of birth because date of birth is very official and it makes people nervous. So if I just say, hey, Teddy, what's your birthday? He doesn't think about it and he just kind of tells me what it is. Okay. And Teddy, are you married or single? Married? All right. Perfect. Okay. These were just going to default. Alt? No, no, no. Uh, your driver's license is active? Okay, good. Just making sure that it's not suspended. Most people will tell you if it is, so you're obviously not going to send it to one of our agents if they have a suspended driver's license. Okay, so pretty typically, you're going to default to active. Uh, default to 16 years old at the time of the light, they got their license, and they're almost always the driver for vehicle number one. All right, so the next thing I'm going to ask him is, hey, Teddy, what's your wife's name? Is her last name Smith? Okay, cool. Kelly? K-E-L-L-Y? Oh, no, I-E? Okay, I'll spell it that way. And what is Kelly's birthday? One twelve seventy two. perfect. Now, I, I know she's married because she's married to Teddy, so I don't need to ask that. I can just quickly default these. Just pop right down, hit your tab. She's going to have an Oklahoma driver's license, probably vehicle two. All right. This particular piece of information does not show up on the agent's information. So primary driver for each vehicle, just pick one. They can all be the primary driver for vehicle number one if you like. The next thing we're going to ask them is, hey, Teddy, what's your address here in Oklahoma City? And I know it's Oklahoma City because because it says so right there, and it makes them more comfortable. So 123 Main, is that M-A-I-N Street? Okay, cool. Is there an apartment number with that, or is that a house? Okay, it's a house. So I'm going to flip right back over here. I'm going to copy his phone number right here, and I'm going to paste it in the phone box. And then I'm going to say, Teddy, is the best number for you the 503-422-2391? Ah, okay, good. Now, if they have another phone number, you can go ahead and put it in the next box. The phone number from here is always pasted first, okay? Then we're going to ask them, Teddy, do you have an email address? All right, teddy.smith at gmail.com. Now, if they don't have an email or they're unwilling to let you have it, which goes either way, some people want to, some people don't, um, or some people just really, I mean, my mother does not have an email address. So if you asked her, she'd say, I don't even have a computer in my house, so I don't have an email address. You will get that a lot. So in that case, you're just going to put none at gmail.com. If they have an email, go ahead and type it in. If they don't have an email or they're unwilling to share that with you, just put none at gmail.com. And that way that box is filled in. And the agent will know that the person does not have an email address to send the quote to. So you want to give them that information. So the next piece of information is that we need, uh, Teddy, do you own your home here on Main Street or are you renting that? Own it, okay. Is that a single family, a townhouse, row house, condo? Great. And about how long have you been living there? 10 years? Okay, cool. And is your homeowners with Progressive or is it with somebody else? So in this case, they have it with, they say nationwide, okay? Would you like a quote for your homeowners also in a bundled price or will you want to just start with the cars? They can go either way. Offer it to them. If it's a bundled price, you're just going to explain to them like it is on the lead sheet down here. Okay, do you own your home or are you renting? If they're bundled, then we're going to tell them, okay, well, we're going to include that in the quote so you get those additional discounts. Just kind of gives them information that they might, you know, so we'll, they'll know that we're going to go, go ahead and give them a, a quote for homeowners. And some people will, even though it's bundled, say, no, just give me a price on the cars. And, you know, you can do that too. And that, that's fine. 
So the next piece that we're going to do here is you've got everything filled out. And if you forget something and you try to save an email, oh, it's going to pop up red. Okay. So we want to make sure that all those boxes are filled out. And if it doesn't, it's going to flag it for you. So then we're going to click save an email. Okay. I just need to make his name different. We already did a test lead for him. Okay. So now we're going to go back and click save an email. And here is the agent's phone number. Okay. So you're going to click, double click this, right click and copy. That's the agent's phone number. And you'll see that it matches right here. Go back over to your phone and you're going to say, Teddy, I need to put you on hold for just a second. Can you hold on? I will be right back. Okay. And then you're going to paste that in here. Now, you, the previous phone number of the transfer that you did prior to this one will show up here when you click the transfer box. So you want to make sure that you erase it before you paste in the new phone number. Okay, always erase a previous phone number. Now, if you were sending this to an external buyer, you would be clicking on external buyer and this box would be blank. And that's gonna be gone over in a, set, in a different video. For now, we're transferring it to our agent. So we're gonna paste in the new phone number. We're gonna tell to ask them to please hold for just a second and we're gonna click park customer dial, okay? When you click Park Customer Dial, that puts the, cust the client, the lead, on hold, and it calls the agent. When the agent answers, you are going to introduce yourself. Hey, this is Wendy. I've got Teddy Smithers on the line for you for a quote. Um, he has two vehicles and homeowners, or he has renters. I left a couple things in the notes. He has a million dollar umbrella policy. Anything that you need to tell the agent that might be extra information for them, they can kind of look for, they appreciate that. Okay, so make sure that you get the agent's name that you're transferring to, say his name is Ryan, and then you're going to say, okay, well, hold on and let me grab Teddy for you. You're going to go up here to the hold button right here and you're going to click on the hold button. Say, hey, Teddy, thanks for holding. This is Ryan, he's our licensed agent. He has all your information ready to go. He's gonna finish up this free quote for you. Alrighty, well, you have a really nice day. Go ahead, Ryan. Now you wanna let the, the agent know that it's okay to go ahead and pick up the call, and so they're gonna start talking. Okay, you are going to record this call, keep it going for at least 60 seconds after they start talking together, and you'll see that in the call time. Now, obviously, it's not going because we don't have a live call right now, but this call time right here, you're just going to add up about one full minute after they're talking, and you be very quiet in the meantime. You don't want to, you know, blow your nose, drink your coffee, sneeze, or talk to your dog because they can hear you. So you want to be quiet while the, you record that 60 seconds. And then you're going to leave three-way call. Now this is really critical. If you hang up both lines right here, the red button, you're going to disconnect them. And that isn't the point. You want to just take yourself out of the call and leave them talking so your lead can get a quote from the agent. Okay, so you're gonna leave three-way call, and there you go. So after you leave three-way call, you're gonna go back over to your lead sheet. You're gonna click this as transferred, and obviously you have some other dif different options. If your client hung up during the transfer, you're gonna put, put disconnected and try to call them back, and that will be gone over on another video. For this purpose, we got the agent, we got him connected to the lead, and that was transferred properly, so we're going to click transferred, click OK, and then click up here at the top, new clear, so that you have a new lead sheet. Now, you can see these boxes are faded out. You know that was sent. There's no worrying about whether or not that information was sent to the agent, or whether or not you can find it again, you're not erasing it, it was saved because these boxes are faded out. Go ahead and click new clear and that way you have a new lead sheet ready to go. Jump back over to your phone 
and you're going to click transferred sale. Okay, occasionally you're going to get somebody that says, I'm on the do not call list. You're going to click do not call right here. Or they're not going to be interested in getting a free quote, so you're going to click not interested. 90% of people that you don't send to an agent, you're just going to click not interested. For this purpose, we transferred it. So we don't want to be calling them back here in the next two days to get a free quote because we've already called them. We've already talked to them. So you're going to click transferred sale. You are ready to go. You are live and active and ready to go for your next call to come in. Okay. For these purposes right now, I'm going to go ahead and pause so I can take a quick break. And that's how you would do that. You click pause, you would click break, and you're ready to go. As soon as you're active again, then you would get more calls. I think that kind of covers everything that we have. Your script is over here. You want to have it right in front of you all the time, so print it out. Your client specifics, um, Randy John in Tulsa, you have to be a homeowner to send it to Randy John. Uh, Kathy Knowles, you need to get a driver's license for her, driver's license number. Those are little particulars that we go over uh, in another video. But just to give you a heads up, you want to have your client specifics um, sitting next to your script so you will know and not make a mistake if it's like in Tulsa, Oklahoma, you want to make sure they're a homeowner. If they're not, it's going to go to an external buyer for that particular area. Okay, and I think I've covered pretty much everything. Um, you have a new lead sheet up, you're ready to go for a new call right there, and you can go ahead and take over, Rich. Awesome. So, so yeah, guys, that, that's really how simple it is. I know Wendy went over a lot of stuff today, and I really hope you took notes. Um, if not, these videos are available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And, you know, really, guys, you know, the way most people learn is through repetition. And so listening to not only how the call goes, you know, uh, and, and the different verbiage, the nice thing is uh, down below you can also listen to live phone calls as well. So you can hear uh, how the questions actually get asked. This video really showed you why the questions get asked the way they do to kind of go along with it. So I would, I would, I would uh, encourage you to go below, listen to some more um of the example calls and then maybe jump back up here and go through this again and go through it with your own uh, logins and, and really going uh, through e each of the forms and filling it out. And that's what we encourage you to do with the example phone calls as well. Go through the example phone call. So have the example phone call ready. Have your lead sheet ready so that way you could um, uh, fill that out and kind of do like a mock example call and kind of get just get used to the form and where things are at. I think that'd be really important. So uh, we're going to go over quite a few other things in other videos, but for today, that's, uh, that's it for today. So uh, look forward to talking with you all in the next video.